Well, greetings and praise Jesus. You know, all lives matter to God. Black lives matter, white lives matter. And even with this prayer t-shirt on, I wanna to say to you that prayer life matters. It is important that you take time to cry out to God for help. It's important that you take time to pray to God for direction and guidance in your life. Now, God hears a sincere prayer. The prophet Jeremiah said to God's people, Judah, when you call for me and search for me with all of your heart, then I will answer. God is waiting to hear your cry. Now, God speaks through visions and dreams. Unfortunately, you have to make sure that that vision and that dream is not coming from the forces of darkness and that that vision and that dream is coming from God. How will you know that? By going to the Holy Scriptures and learning God's ways, learning how God speaks. And he also speaks through people. So we just want to encourage you to understand that God wants to transform your life. This teaching ministry, this series on karma and reincarnation is not to just inform you, but to believe God that it will help change your life, give you an understanding so that you can reach out to someone that's into this bad karma, good karma, and coming back in the afterlife as something else or another place and another time and let them know the truth of God's word and help them to understand about the gospel of Jesus. Christ. With that being said, we just want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you will look up on your servant right now and that you will look up on the listening and viewing audience, Lord God, that they will receive the revelation of your word and that it will be applied to their life so that they can be able to be servants used for your glory. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we want to go right back into our lesson in which we was in part number three, um, I believe, on karma and reincarnation. And you know, in the Hinduism, they teach um, very, very differently from the world that we live in. But nevertheless, we thank you so much for tuning in to Disciples for Jesus. And we're going to encourage you and ask you to subscribe to our YouTube page, which is Words for Jesus Jerome Johnson. And also our Facebook page, you can type in Jerome Johnson. And you can find all of our teachings on social media platform. Now, this Hinduism life is a transmigration that they teach, where you go from one state of existence or place to another. You may be Become, uh, uh, you may die and become an animal, an insect, or, or a gorilla, or you know, just just all kinds of ways. It's just a repetitive, uh, ongoing routine where when you die one way, you come back another way. But the scripture teaches us that it is appointed for a man to die once, and after this, the judgment. Now, unfortunately, even the gurus of Hinduism, the spiritual teachers and the Brahmins that are um, high priests, they also teach and believe this particular system. And they also teach that there is no repentance, nor is there any atonement. But that is not true because Peter made it very plain to those that were at Pentecost, to his listening audience, to let them know that they have hope even in the midst of them deciding to crucify Jesus. He let them know that you can repent. He says, repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, that they may be wiped out, that they may be erased because God wants to forgive you so that you can live not just a good life, but that you can learn how to live a life that's pleasing to him. Because the reality is there will be no reincarnation, nor will karma help you. When you die, God is going to be the final judge. And God's word, in reality, is what we need to trust in and obey and learn how to read because God's word is law. It is the instruction manual. It is a lamp unto thy feet and a light to thy path if you allow it to be. But nevertheless, just as the Apostle Paul said to the church of Rome, God is saying to you that are listening that for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus 
our Lord. God wants to give you an eternal life. He don't want you to physically die, nor spiritually die. Because when you're not serving him and you're believing in the deception of an afterlife and the deception of a good life and an evil life will cause you to come back in an evil way or in a good way, then you are being deceived and your spirit is transforming into a belief and a practice that God wants you to be set free from. Otherwise, you will burn in an everlasting hell up under God's judgment. So the wages of sin, the penalty of sin, the price for sin is death, spiritually and physically. Now reincarnation, why not? That's the question. Well, let's look at the scripture in Galatians chapter number six and eight. We have covered Galatians six and seven in part one and two. So now let's go to verse eight. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. And we gave you some real good understanding of that in part one and part two. So understanding that the works of the flesh is something that we really need to realize that we operate up under when we first learn how to live to please ourselves as we grow up from babies to adolescence to teen to adulthood. It's always going to be how to please ourselves and not how to please God. And that's why you need a transformed life by receiving God's plan of salvation the way it has been presented to those that were listening all the way back in the first century in the book of Acts where the church started through Jesus' apostles and you can receive the transforming salvation and the spirit and the immersion in water baptized in Jesus' name representing the death, burial, and resurrection of a new life in Jesus. So let's look at this. How do you sow in the flesh and how do you reap in the flesh? In other words, whatever life you live, whatever you begin to practice and you begin to love and you begin to do every day is what's going to cause you to want to continue to do. So here are the works of the flesh. And you can go back over this PowerPoint bullet point teaching ministry that we do. That's why we put it up here like this. So you can go back and you can see for yourself, am I practicing fornication? Am I practicing adultery? Am I practicing enviousness? Am I practicing drunkenness? So these are the works of the flesh. This is the life that people live. Yes, you will sow from this and you will reap from this. But when you die, the judgment will not come from all these different beliefs and all these different gods, all these different ways. Your judgment is going to come from one God and we're going to find out in our final lesson, lesson number four, how is that going to happen? So these are the works of the flesh. Now let's talk about that soul to the flesh. What it means to pander to it or to cuddle it or to stroke it instead of crucifying it. You just keep on giving in to all of those works of the flesh that you can go back and read up on and you get stronger and stronger into practicing them and learning how to draw other people to them instead of killing it out. You can't kill out your habits by yourself. You can't bring about no karma or no reincarnation uh, to bring yourself back into the existence those things are not true but you can crucify your flesh only by surrendering to God and only by receiving God's spirit again read the book of Acts and see how the foundation of the gospel of the church started and you can crucify your flesh your mind can become brand new so you won't lose that old fleshly mind. Those temptations might still come, but you will understand that you have the power of God, the word of God, the people of God, and that now your body can become the temple of the living God. So the soul to the flesh means to harbor grudges and entertain impure fantasy or wallow in self-pity. Soul to the flesh means bad companies who, whose influence is hard to resist. Don't put yourself in environments. Don't put yourself around people that cause you to keep on becoming weaker and weaker to the habits that you want to be delivered from. Get around people that have been set free. Go to a church where they talk about deliverance and sin and cleansing and testify about how God brought them out like he did me the life that I was living. Every time we read pornographic literature, 
Every time we live, we lie in the bed when we ought to be up and praying. Every time we take a risk, which strains our self-control. When you sow to the flesh every day, this is for the believers, you will not reap a life of holiness. So God is saying to the sanctified believers, don't get caught up in this deceiving agenda today. Don't get caught up in these crazy beliefs. Don't get caught up in satisfying all those works of the flesh where you have been delivered from. If you continue to practice deliverance, the deliverance that God has given you. And God is saying to those of you that are tired of the works of the flesh, then you have to stop what you see going on in these bullet points and ask God to transform your life. To what? The fruits of the Spirit. Now, the fruits of the Spirit, you have to practice first with God before you practice them with people. Because people become self-righteous and they, uh, uh, they have, have good morals of, morals of being patient and goodness and, and kind. But before we can love our neighbors, ourselves, we have to first love the Lord thy God with all our heart, soul, and mind. We have to practice loving Him. We have to praise Him for His joy being us. We have to thank Him and ask Him for peace. We have to realize it's his goodness that ought to lead us unto repentance. It's his faithfulness in the midst of our unfaithfulness. It's his mercy in the midst of us being merciless. It's his goodness and his gentleness in the midst of our selfishness. God wants to teach us how to have self-control. And this can happen through believing and obeying the scriptures. So now we still want to stay focused on this reincarnation. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 1 and 21, the angel came to Mary and said, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted is God with us. Now that's plain, very plain. Now, it's hard to understand how can God put himself inside of a human body without the seed of a man. Well, it's hard to understand how in the world a seed of a man gets in a woman and we stay in the belly of a woman for nine months or sometimes prematurely a little sooner and we come out and develop and grow and grow and continue to grow. That's hard for us to understand, but we can see it in reality with our physical eyes as we are living now. So there's nothing too hard for God. So for God to be the incarnation and the incarnation of a son, the incarnation is Jesus. God can do anything because he is the creator of all things. So we get our proof right there when we read Matthews 1 and 23 and the apostle John says the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. So it's because of Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection would not have taken place if he was not born sinless and holy. Would not have taken place if he was not reincarnated, came in a way where no one else has ever came and was ever born because he is a sinless God and he is the one only 100% man and 100% God. And because of the death, burial, and resurrection, you have an opportunity to have another life. You're either going to have another life with God or another life without God. But that life will not entail you coming back as something else. It will not entail you um, going through a routine or a repetitive repetitive thing of being transmigrated or going from one existence from one place to another but you're either going to go to heaven to be with God or you're going to go to eternal burning hell forever and we're going to conclude with that in our last lesson talking about the understanding of where you're really going to go and you're only going to die at one time but yet there is a link in there that you're going to find out about um, in lesson number four the final lesson as well so we have to understand that Jesus fulfilled Psalms 90 verses 6 through 8 when he was talking about the sacrifice that would be made and so now Paul writes it to the Hebrews and he let them know wherefore when he cometh into the world he says sacrifice and all offerings thy wood is not but a body has died prepared for me and not only did the angel come and tell Mary she would have a son but in Luke 1 and 37 the angel said with God nothing shall be impossible so whether you receive it or believe it 
it's true Jesus died and he rose again and he lives forevermore and if Christ be not risen then is our preaching vain worthless and your faith is also vain it's worthless it's of none effect but we know that is not the truth so to you karma believers to you reincarnated believers um, I hope you will come into the reality of who you really need to surrender to and who you really need to serve because like the Apostle Paul said in 1st Corinthians the preaching of the cross is foolishness unto them but unto us it is the power of God and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the world when Jesus hung on that cross and said it is finished the plan of redemption the plan of salvation is in completion it was a one-time atoning sacrifice for you and for me and we want you to understand that in our last lesson we're going to talk about reincarnation versus resurrection and judgment and until next time we pray that god's word will cause you to not just think but to research it Go back and look at those works of the flesh. Look at the fruits of the Spirit. To understand that you don't want to talk this language about that's bad karma. You don't want to believe in all of these deceiving um, teachings and all these crazy science fiction movies. And even with the movie Avatar, I'm going to show a quick clipping on that perhaps in my final lesson to get you to see how in the Avatar, how the man was in a wheelchair and he had an avatar and when he go into this machine his spirit transfers over into this avatar see this is that this is that hinduism concept that comes in a, a entertaining form and this is that that that, that concept that want to make you believe in this craziness that is really not of god at all but we want to find out where are you really going to go when you die and until next time, we pray that God's word will be a blessing to you, a help to you, and that it will change your life and draw you closer to believing that Jesus is Lord. God bless you until next time.